Hey everyone, welcome to Gadget Talk, the creative gadget cast show brought to you by the Geocache Talk Network. If you're watching live, you can be part of the adventure tonight by joining us in the chat room where everybody is always really excited and I really love seeing all the questions coming from the chat room so you can join us live there. Now if you're listening to us later, please give us a like and subscribe on YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, or even Periscope. Now we got to talk about our patrons. If, if you'd like to become a patron, uh, click on the Become a Patron link right on the page of Geocache Talk uh, website or head over to patreon.com at Geocache Talk for more details. Patrons now get the new, not new, but the famous Blackout Coin, which is right there, the Blackout Coin. So you can pick up that up. All patrons, for any amount that you give, you get that Blackout Coin. Um, and many other items during the year, as well as bonus content and invites to special events for, for patrons only. Support levels start at as little as $3 a month. And also, Geocache Talk is brought to you by Logwork, the creators of the fantastic logbook. Uh, made with genuine right in the rain paper, the logbook's designed for the micro containers of the present and future geared towards the hider who would rather go caching than doing cash maintenance. Find them at logwork.com. L-O-G-W-E-R-K.com. And, all right, of course, I'm Derek, Baker Six Clan, and Chad is with us tonight, but we also have a very special guest, Doug, or also known as Roomba Cats. Hey! Hey, welcome, Doug. Glad to be here. Glad to be here. So, Man. if you don't know about Doug. Doug is a great creative cash builder here out of California uh, uh, on, the, on, the, on the West Coast. As you can see in front of him, all those amazing caches that he has there. Um, yeah. And this is just some of them, right? You have, what, we're talking about 50 of them out in the wild? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, that's some of them, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, that's great. I know I've been really ex so excited about this this episode because I've been watching a lot of your stuff coming up on Instagram, Facebook. We're in part of some, some of the same groups together, and I absolutely love these. They are so cool. The workman uh, workmanship, craftsmanship, everything is phenomenal. Oh, that's so nice. Yeah, it's it's kind of went be way beyond a hobby. It's a <laughs> it's a kind of a bizarre obsession. That I. I don't know what's wrong with me, but I, I don't know. I'm the happiest when I'm making gadget caches. So, yeah, every weekend you'll see me out in my shop making something. I'll just come up with an idea, and it's like I got to build something. Just, yeah, I, I think just, we all, yeah, all three of us here, right, yeah. have that same, yeah. same bug. Oh, yeah, this is like fire and gasoline. <laughs> yeah, very much so. That is really um, cool. So, real quick, we want to talk about your caches, of course, but before then, let's just um, for people that don't know you, let's just learn a little bit about you. So we just have a few questions um, to ask you here. So what yeah. got you into geocaching? Uh, when I was uh, 2004, I was in Seattle and my brother had a GPS and he says, hey, I want to introduce you to something. This is kind of neat. And so we went and uh, out into the, the forest there in Seattle and uh, we went and found some geocaches. Back then, it was just ammo cans. It was like ammo can, ammo can, ammo can. But it was really great. I was just like, hey, this is kind of neat. And then uh, it wasn't, it was quite a while. And then I came across uh, some gadget caches uh, here in California uh, by some people named Team Gently. And these were the coolest things I'd ever seen. I thought, hey, that's a neat idea. I wonder if I could make something like that. And so that's kind of how I got into geocaching, but then how I got into making gadget caches. And so my first gadget caches were kind of lame. I mean, they were just you know kind of the, the kind of the classic ones where you pull out the the little perch on the birdhouse and the, the bottom drops out, or you float up a little container in a tube and that kind of thing. And so right. those were my first attempts at making gadget caches, and then it just kind of evolved from there. And so uh, you can kind of kind of see. And so, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's just kind of like a runaway train with me. I really m love making this stuff. And so geocaching is really a great outlet for my creativity. That's what right. I really like about it and how I got into it. That's great. 
so one thing um so making these caches obviously takes a little bit of a skill so what do you do for a living oh i'm an engineer uh been an engineer for about 28 years and i work mostly in aerospace um and so it really does contribute a lot because i get exposed to all kinds of creative ways of building things and so that's what i really love about being an engineer uh but uh Another thing about it is that right now I do all probability and statistics. And although I'm good at it, I don't really enjoy it that much. Um, they, they pay me well for it, but I need a creative outlet. And that actually contributes to kind of the boring job I have right now. I want to say it's, it's actually kind of interesting, but I got to build something. I have to build something <laughs> to, make, to, feel, to actually feel happy. And so you can see that I'm pretty happy. I think that goes for all of us. Yeah, this us <laughs> three here definitely. Oh yeah. I can't wait to the time I either get out into my shop or I'm in my office wiring something up. Now it's just I, it, it's my highlight of my week. So, yeah. what oh, yeah, is I'll your favorite cache that you've done? My favorite cache that I've done. You know I. There, I, I do have a favorite cache. I do. And I don't think it's everyone's favorite cache. And, but this is it right here. Okay. I'm going to drag it out. So this one right here. So I think this is just the coolest cache. So there's like a PVC pipe in there. It's four inches, but it's a maze. And you have to get this little ball. You can see it in the cage. I think. Uh, right. Maybe I can see it there. You can see it. Okay. Yeah. So you have to negotiate this thing, tilting it left and right, getting it through the maze from the green point right there. I don't know if you can see that to the red point over here. And you have to think it through a little bit. It, it, it goes all over the place. So you, you have to rotate and tilt it uh, in order to get to the final end of it. And when it comes out here, it just kind of drops down and you can pull it out, take it out inside. It's just basically a, kind of a, clear plastic uh, bubble or a, or a little ball inside, hollow ball, and you, it has the log inside of it, so a little tiny log. And so you sign the log and put it back in. But number two that I have, uh, I have another one that I'm making. You can literally open up like that with a hinge because uh, it has a key in it and you can unlock the lock. So the second one I'm making uh, is going to uh, be able to uh, have lots of swag in this. So there'll be lots of room in here for swag. So I All thought right. that would be a lot of fun. So I just, just, just had to make it better. All right. So on that one, just a real quick question, boy. You have now. Are you trying to get the marble that's on the underneath the cage, or you, is there something on the inside that you're trying to get out? There's a there's a there's a plastic ball in there. It's an acrylic. Yeah, ball I see. I see the ball twisted. there. Yeah. And that's what you try yeah, to manipulate so, through the maze. Okay. Right. Yeah. Okay, now I see it and moving. So it's at the starting point right there. I'd have to actually go through the entire maze. Uh, okay, all right. Let's see if I can do it. It might take a while. Okay, now I see how that, that was where I was, I was thinking that there might be something else that came out, and that was just kind of like a diagram of what it looked on the inside. Yeah, so that's how, that's how it works. I don't know if you can see it. Anyways, that that's really cool. This is my favorite cash. I don't know why. It's just it's just so obnoxious. I it, that's why it's my favorite. I guess I don't know. Uh, people seem to enjoy it, but it's been found a lot and it has a lot of favorite points, which is really great. So uh, yeah, but yeah, this is my favorite one. Just just because it's just it's just insane. It is. It's just crazy. So. Audie Olson wants to know, did you bring your active hides home for tonight? <laughs> that's funny. I was just thinking that same thing. That's not the one that's normally out there, is it? The oh, cash it is, you just yeah. had. So, so you brought it home live? tonight? For the... Say that again. So you brought that cash tonight? You deactivated it for the night and brought it home? Or... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> so it's actually not far from where I work. It's just like a couple of miles. And so I wanted to, um, I've got the other one that uh, the old one's on the side, but I just kind of wanted to show you when the uh, people would find normally out in the field. That is really cool. Yeah. And you'd find all these other ones. Yeah. yeah 
too. Yeah. So when so, you're creating a cache, what inspires you when you create a cache? Oh, boy, that's a good question. Um, so many times I'll think, you know, I, I think what happens is I'll, I'll get an idea or I'll see, actually, I'll see another cache. And I'll think, hey, that's a really neat idea. Uh, but, you know, I'd want to maybe make it my own and do something else. And, I, and it kind of like marinates in the back of my head. And I'll think about it and think about it. And then just it just kind of hits me. I don't know. I think I've got like 10 caches running. If I only knew what I was thinking, that would be great. But uh, I've got like these caches in my head. I've got a book of about 100 pages that, of cache ideas that I, I want to create. This is one of the reasons why I have not gotten into smart caches yet, because I still have about 100 mechanical caches uh, to make before I get to the smart cache level. So, uh, yeah. So that's that's basically, yeah. Uh, how much time does it take? Oh, man, it all depends. Uh, like these caches I have back here, I've been working on these for about six months, I think. Wow. Uh, uh, simultaneously, I've been working on them. Although I've got like caches like uh, this one, uh, just like grid and template. So you rotate the grid and there's a like a little coded uh, system on there. That took me, uh, I don't know, uh, an hour. And so nice. uh, how much time do I spend? <laughs> you know, I, I, a lot of it depends on the complexity. And, uh, you know, it's funny. This is this is my simplest cache. It's my least favorite cache, you know, to decode it with this little template. Right. But it has the most favorite points. <laughs> I have a cache like that, too. I think it's the stupidest cache. I, I absolutely hate it. And I want to replace it. And everybody loves it and has more favorite points than most of them. So. <laughs> But that, that, is... that goes to show just a simple gadget cache is people like them more than these, you know, outlandish, you know, yeah. Arduino electronic caches. <laughs> so, yeah. so, yeah. so you said know? that was a complex puzzle. It is. And so what, what happens is it's, it's kind of tricky. You, you have to get a, a paper and pen. So this will, so you'll rotate this and it'll say the first letter. And so when you, so there's holes in there, right? Right. There's holes in there and there's a whole bunch of codes and symbols and everything. So when you rotate it, you'll suddenly realize, let's see. Do, 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 do. There it is. So when you read this, it says the first letter of the combination is a D, a T or a P. And then you rotate it again. The first letter of the combination is not a D or a T. So it's like, okay, well, it's, 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 it's a P then. Okay. It's a P. And wow. so that's, so it, you'll do that twice. And then on this side, do that, and you'll get the four letter word. It'll give you the combination uh, to that lock. It's a four letter word. And so most, everybody loves this. This is, this is, it's easy. It's simple. I, I, I try to shoot for like simple elegance. I love that term, simple elegance. And so that's kind of what this is. There's hardly any moving parts. Uh, and it's, it's very entertaining. You have to you, know, you have to really concentrate a little bit to figure out process of illumination. And so I think that's why everybody likes it so much. I, that's really cool. I love that. That's, yeah, that's it's a good one. That's what's really cool. Yeah, I can see a road trip in my future here down to California. Yeah, I gotta go see family. I gotta go yeah. see family. They're just about an hour north of you, so yeah, I gotta. Oh, go. Oh yeah, that, they're close. <laughs> so once well, this is all over, they're coming out here this year, so I'll probably be out that way maybe next year with everything else going on. Oh, there's so. a bunch of amazing caches here. I gotta take you on a tour in Southern Done. California. Yeah. <laughs> Done. <laughs> yeah, I'm there. I'm there. I, I like That'd that. I, there's several people that come to Seattle that ask me, "Hey, I want to go find your caches." I'm like, "Hey, let me know when you're here. I'll I'll pick you up and we can go. I'll drive you around. We can find them." Uh -huh. you know, it takes it takes a long day, but we can get them all. So, and and That's then up. there's other obviously creative cachers in the area that have uh, amazing caches that we'll drive by. So we have to stop and get those as well. Right. So. All right. So, Doug, what is your favorite gadget cache that's not yours? 
Oh, wow. Oh, the, you know, I, it's almost like you'd have to almost put that in categories. My favorite, uh, uh, I, I don't <laughs> genres of cat. Oh, let's see. Ones that I found, I've seen so many. I mean, like the, the TARDIS, um, it is amazing. I mean, that that is just yeah. spectacular. The Wisconsin one up there, yeah, the yeah the house, Wisconsin. and, and it yeah. was in a yeah. blog today released by uh geocache geocache.com. Today, it was in a blog featuring that one. That one was by uh Dave DJW House. He had that one, and there was another one, the uh Darth Vader one was in there. The Both Darth of those Vader, yeah. were, were featured in that, so but as far really as ones I found, I would have to go with. And this is there's so many close seconds. Uh, I would have to go with the uh, super pages by Goblin Dust. Uh, that was just so much fun. There's a plot to it. it <laughs> oh, there is. Spectacular. <laughs> My wife figured that out because it's well, I don't want to give it away, but it's a giant phone book, and you got to go through there and find a phone number to dial. Yeah. Uh, and it's a really it is a full size phone book. Like yeah, the Dallas so. Fort Worth phone book. What t- yeah. I mean, it could be a like little town phone book, right? Oh, or is it like a, a three inch one? Out. Like a three inch one. Ugh, I don't, I don't know if it's quite three inches. It's pretty big. <laughs> um, but he did a great lot. job on it. Yeah. There's like stages. I mean, you've, you, you basically got to move through it. And it's automated in a lot of ways, too. I mean, it's really cool. Uh, I mean, so he really put a lot of work and love into that thing. It was amazing. But I mean, but there's again, there's so many, many great gadget caches out there that are are spectacular. Uh, these are just ones that I've seen. I mean, my my small little world. Uh, you know, this was in Seattle that I I saw the goblin dust work, but and I didn't even get to see everything I wanted to see. I mean, but. Uh, yeah, I would have to say that was that was it. And then the Johnny Throne Throne uh, Throne Room. Yeah. That was another great one. I, I this if there's a museum of gadget caches, those two are gonna be in it. That's my favorite one, all time favorite one. Um Oh yeah. The the right? TARDIS is is fun and it's great and it's put together amazing. I mean it looks so good, but having a full size porta potty there that you actually have to scan a credit card to get into and then I, I can't talk about the rest of the puzzles but it doesn't stop there you get inside and you gotta complete all these other puzzles to get to the logbook and there's a tv in there that shows a honey bucket blown up and or a video of it and everything and so it's it's a amazing cash oh it's a must do it's a pilgrimage level cash yes oh wow well chad when i'm there next summer yeah, yeah, it's oh, yeah. Um, about an hour and a half from my house, but I'll do the drive, no yeah, problem. Sounds good. There's several on the way down that we can pick up. That's oh, yeah. that's great. I mean, now that I'm since not going to be out in that area this year, we'll be I'll be out there next year for 2021 ish, the 21 year anniversary. So, yeah. but yeah. oh, all right. So, Doug, what inspires you when it comes to creating gadget caches? Oh, that's a good question what inspires me uh you know i, I kind of have uh, some basic rules of gadget caches uh that i tried to follow um i've i've had i've had gadget caches that i've built that just kind of failed they just didn't have there was just something just fundamentally wrong with them even though they looked really good and they were interesting uh and the way i learned how to make gadget caches is somewhat through trial and error but i've kind of learned the, this these four basic principles of of gadget caches is one people don't like to read so when they go to the just <laughs> they don't want to have to read a whole lot to figure out what to do i just want to pick it up and start playing with it and so you know as intuitive as you can make it uh is is a number one priority and so if they just want to start fiddling with it and try and figure it out. So that's really important. Intuitive. And don't make them read a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, let's see. What else? Um, help the I, – I want people to feel like they're making progress. You know, it's not this all or nothing kind of thing. It's like 
you know, I'll try this. That didn't work. I try that. It doesn't work. What I want people to do is to try this, get it to the first stage, and then get it to the next stage, and then get it to the next stage kind of thing so that they feel like they're making progress. And so that that helps a lot. And so typically, like, locks are a great example of this. So I'm working on a cache called I'll bet you like – or a, I heard you like locks. That's it. I heard you like locks. And so there's a bunch of locks in it, and you have to, like, do each lock in order to get to the final thing of it. So that's a great example. Oh, this is another great example of the, the principle of that. As you're going along and you're figuring out the code uh, little by little until you get to the end. So that's a that's a very simple, simple idea is, is uh, progression, you know, so that people feel like they're going to get to the end. Right. That's, that's and, really uh, cool. let's see. I guess the third thing is make it pretty, I guess. Yeah, that's a that's a big one. Uh, yeah. And uh, uh, let me think. What else? That's about it, I guess. That's those are the the, the really the most important. Yeah, just have it. Oh, another another big one is don't make it too hard or too simple. So that's right. you know there's just a fine line, and that's hard to do. And so if they can figure it out real fast, it's not as much fun. But if it's a it's kind of challenging. Yeah, if they have to go through several different states and just like oh that didn't work, let me try this. Uh, that makes it a lot more fun. So those would be my four things. Uh, that's what inspires me when I come up with an idea. How can I do that? You know, how can I make it so that they've got to figure it out? Like this one right here, it's it's really quick. So you basically got to put these this this wheel and make a nine words uh, sentence out of it in order to get the combination to the slot. So that's pretty straightforward. It's fun. It's good. You know, it's interesting, but yeah. You know, something like this, where it takes time, it takes some effort, it takes some, some you know, writing things down, as simple as that, people can just pick this up, grab it, and go, all right, hey, hey, this makes a sentence, hey, you know, kind of thing. So that's it. Um, this is another one that I do, which kind of has those principles. It's, it's a Scrabble. I call it Geo Scrabble. And so there's a geocaching word on each of these four sides they get to find in order and then take the word score, put it into the combination uh, to get it open. Oh, wow. That's, that's, uh, nice that's really that good. That is really good. good. Yeah. So here, as I'm seeing all these different caches, now these are internal caches. What do you put on? How do you hide them in the wild out out there i mean these are what's inside of the cache that you open up correct or are they you're not having like the these out there just in the wild for the weather like this are you yeah i just throw them out the window and just like the <laughs> like, you know, actually, no. you know that that is you know that's that's the secret formula right there is so i make fake rocks they're hollow fake rocks i make them out of concrete and this really helps to hide these caches. Caches like this probably wouldn't last about two minutes around here. No. So, uh, what's that? Oh, no, no, they wouldn't so, last like that. No, not at all. <laughs> so, so I have like it'll go in a, like a plastic bag. Uh, I have like a seal meal thing. I make a custom plastic bag, and I also, uh, or I, I'll fi try to find some Tupperware that would would fit. So I make fake rocks, and it's a lot easier than it sounds. Uh, the initial work you put into it uh, is, is it's a little bit of work. Uh, but, uh, oh, okay. So I'm going to show you. Here's a mold. Here's the inside of a mold to a fake rock. So that's the outside of the rock. And this is latex, right? So it's, it's, it's rubbery. And it, uh, I took this mold right off of a real rock. And so what I do, and I'll, I'll go into the outside of it in just a second. So what I'll do is I'll make pancakes of plastic cement. Plastic cement is um, it's just cement without rocks in it. But it turns into, and then I take... Uh, also take a little bit of uh, 
fiberglass, chopped fiberglass, and put it in there too to give it a lot more strength. Right. So I'll make pancakes and place them inside the mold. I'll let it harden and take it out, and um, you get a you get a fake rock, and it's hollow. And I put that over my caches, and I've only had two caches of my 50 disappear wow uh, and i'm and it's just it, they they look real i try to paint them like the other rocks uh it's pretty easy to paint them it just look at another rock and just try to mimic the colors <laughs> kind of thing so that's the way that's how i do it uh i've also got uh, uh tree houses uh, i'm sorry bird houses uh, that i use and most of the time they're in fairly obscure areas Okay. Uh, so, so that helps, but the, the rocks are king. So concealment is king. If you can hide them and make it look like they belong there, uh, that's another thing with the, uh, the, my urban hides can make it look like it belongs. Uh, you'll do pretty well. Right. That's just really cool. So do you have a spot in your house or a garage or somewhere where you have all these ideas of caches and they just don't quite work? And so you stick them aside until you can figure them out later. <laughs> Let me take you to my museum yeah. of failures. Yeah, I do. <laughs> yes, I do. I literally have a shelf. Uh, I have a shelf of things I've been working on for about three years. You know, it's just, it's a good idea, but it's just, it isn't quite there, you know? And uh, I, I'm getting better at it. And I've been doing these for so long that now um, I can kind of do them as I go. Before I'd plan it, draw it, and do dimensions and, and try to figure it out in my head so that uh, I didn't have to think too much. But I've gotten better and better at it uh, you know, as you go. And so uh, that's one of the benefits of being obsessed as I am. <laughs> Just where I can make caches much faster than I used to. Uh, and it's just lots of practice. Yeah, I think most creative ca or most cash builders have that pile or that shelf somewhere where <laughs> just isn't right. And so we stick it aside until we can figure it out. And sometimes they just don't do anything. Yeah, um, I've That's had some good. cash builders over to my house and they're, oh, I, want, I like this. This is really cool. And I'm like, well, if you want to finish it, go ahead. You can have it. <laughs> I'm tired of looking at it. So, yeah. Well, that's good. Every every time I have a failure, uh, I'll uh, I learn something from it. So here's a great example of this. So this cache, this is called Unblock Me. It's just like the, there's a there's a phone game uh, where uh, you let's see. Oh, there it is. So there's a little magnet here. You can move these you can move these blocks around because there's a little magnets on each one of these blocks. My first attempt used to be just. Let's see if I can figure out where my hands are. Uh, so I just had like that much of the first cache. So the problem is I would get the block to come out on this end, but then they had to put it back in and reset it. And I'm like, how? And there was so so on my my bookshelf of failures, I've got that. I should have brought it over here. So I thought, well, how can I get this to automatically reset itself so somebody else doesn't have to? And so what I did, oh. Uh, is they literally have to go from one side to the other on the back of this one block in there. It's, it's, I don't know if you can see it. It's, it's, uh, there it is. It's uh, green and orange. So you got to get that block all the way to that side. You can actually read the number under here, uh, through this little window. And you can open the lock on that side and open the lock on that side once you get those numbers. So this, this is the success of the failure of another one where it resets itself. So these blocks, you literally have to move the blocks around behind it in order to get it from one side to the other. And so it it, it resets itself. So That's this really cool. one literally was an experiment of how can I get something to re automatically reset itself. So if I was going to add a number five to that list of what inspires me, it would be create something that can reset itself or it's pretty easy to reset on your, you know, with very little effort. Right. Yeah. So Dave, uh, DJW House has a question. Do you waterproof or seal or use special paint on your caches? I put, oh, there's two things that I do. Uh, yes, I add lots of polyurethane, lots and lots of polyurethane and paint, outdoor paint. 
But another thing is I use something called, uh, oh, here's, uh, oh, uh, I'm trying to think, do I have one? It's called MDO, and it is the same uh, plywood that they use in billboards. And so it gets a lot of weather. It gets a lot of rain and that kind of thing. And this stuff wears like it's so well out in the uh, out in the wild. So sometimes we get a lot of rain and it gets underneath the rocks and uh, it still survives. Uh, it does pretty well. It doesn't mold. Uh, it doesn't warp. It doesn't peel. It doesn't crack. Uh, I love this stuff. And when I discovered it just at the local plywood place, uh, I started using it and it's and it's got like a like a paper backing on it already. So it's so easy to paint and everything. I mean, I love this stuff. And so I'll buy it usually in like half, e half inch sheets and, uh, and then make my caches out of that. I mean, most of these that I have that, that use that have paint on it, so I can't show you the finish, but it makes it so much easier to make uh, a gadget cache that's gonna weather the, the elements. Yeah. Very yeah, we so. use a lot of MDO in the sign uh, on our signs at work. So yeah, yeah, it's it's the secret weapon right there. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and jump to this question here, Chad, because yeah. uh, yeah, I've well. seen this the Jumanji come up several times, and as you can see, the Jumanji in uh, on Doug's left, uh, our right. So the question is, did you make the Jumanji board, or did uh, did you get it somewhere? I made this. Uh, and so you can see right here. Let me, let me bring it a little more front and center. Well, and I have a picture of it too. Let me pull up the picture too. Wow. There you go. That's a good picture of it. And so I made this. And so this, uh, I, I have been obsessed with uh, making a Jumanji board for a long time. I've been wanting to make one. And so this is the way I made this. There's a video on YouTube about a DIY Jumanji board. It's really good. And I saw that and I'm like, I can do that. And that's how this came about. And so the way they did this, this is, let's see. What, oh, here it is. So this looks like it's it's part of a carving of the front and everything. Right. Uh, but it's not. It's a... Uh, Don't drop it. <laughs> <laughs> it's literally two resin castings. Oh, oh, there we go. Yeah, there we go. Two resin castings uh, that I made, and so these were just sculpted out of clay. Then I took a, uh, a silicone resin mold of that, and you know, uh, then I basically glued it on the front. I cut a little portion of that wood away, and I just glued it in there. So it's pretty easy to make, and so and then also. What's that? I was going to say, and then you inset it inside some plywood, it looks like. Right, yeah. So there's, on this, there's two layers. Let's see, let me move that out of the way. <laughs> All right, so now let's talk about cash maintenance. Um, <laughs> there goes the toy store. Okay. <laughs> okay, so... This is actually two plies of plywood right here. Uh, you, I don't know if you can see it, but there's two layers of eighth inch plywood. Okay. The first, the first sheet is straight plywood. And then I, with my bandsaw, I cut, I took the, the, the uh, uh, what did I do? I took that little mold I just showed you, traced around it and cut that out and laid it in there. And so, and then I just glued those, those, that uh, resin cast piece in there. And then I just put, some uh the the uh it's it's called the java uh gel coat or something like that and it just stained it basically and so that's how it came out it came out really good i was i have one that's painted i actually think i like this one better i like that one and it's, so it's it was the teak really look, yeah. to make. it's just a box you know with this little little plywood cut out and then i just glued it in there that's it that is so cool. It I looks way cooler. Look. <laughs> but yeah, I just, it, that's how I just saw it on the video uh, on YouTube and that's how I made it. Right. And, and so, so the outside of it looks cool. Uh, can you show us the inside? Yeah. 
So the expense is building in the uh, chat room right now. <laughs> As Cashers just says, just wow. Wow. Okay. Uh, Joshua, yeah. Geocache Flyers, what a beautiful cache. Can't wait to find some of Doug's caches someday. Okay. So there are four puzzles you have to solve to get here. And so every time you solve one of the puzzles, you get one of the figures. This is a little monkey. So there's a monkey, a rhino, an elephant, and a crocodile. So every time you get into one of these, these are little boxes. So you can get into it. So this one right here, you're going to give get, be given like a 10-letter 10, 10 word. It's going to be gibberish, and you have to decode it. So using this, you put in a letter here, you can get it there. So you so that's that's how you can get it. So once you get that, you have to it's it's kind of a clue. It isn't the actual word. Once you figure that out, what the outcome is or what what the word is you're trying to think of, it's ten letters, you can unlock the monkey. You can get your monkey, right? <laughs> so and you can place it right. Uh, it's placed at any one of the starting positions. There's a little magnet in there, and then there's these little reed switches in there. And as soon as you get all four of these, that center section is going to light up, and you can read the, the how to unlock the ammo can. Number two <laughs> is this side. There we go. So up here, there's little dials on here. Each one of these has animal tracks, and you have to line up four animal tracks, like in a box. Right. So just like, dun, dun. <laughs> and so uh, if you can line up all four, you can remove that and get another piece and put it in one of these start positions. And then over here, you've got, uh, this is actually a box of, of blocks that are connected together in certain ways. You have to put them together and solve an anagram. So it doesn't give you the code of the lock, but you have to solve the anagram to get the combination of the lock. And then, wow. and then on this, on this one right here, you have to get the, the there's a, well, there it is, there's a uh, skeleton key in there. You have to figure out how to get it out uh, through that little hole. You're going to be given a little tool and you got to figure out how to get that out. Unlock the lock in order to get it. Once you get all four pieces, you put them down on the start positions, and you'll find out uh, how to get into the ammo can. Wow. So that is this just... is going to go to our local library. I'm waiting for them to open up. They already gave me the green light. And so they're going to put a book, uh, Geocaching for Dummies, or something like that right next to it. So hopefully, I would love to have this inspire others to go geocaching around here, because we've got some really great caches in my area. Yeah. So and... is this one going to be live? This is going to be real cash? It's a, pardon me? This is going to be a real uh, cash that's out in the wild? Oh, yeah. So, before we get to that one question there about the games, um, just kind of, I've been sitting in here kind of laughing at what the uh, chat room is saying. Um, Adi Olson says, I've seen seen this movie enough times that I, uh, to know that this won't end well in the game. <laughs> and then uh, the Aussie geocacher to see my shell said, Putting this out during 2020 is dangerous. So, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. We already feel like we're in Jumanji as it is. I, the, I suspect I, I have an alternate. I have an alternate, and I'd love to show you. So this one right here. So in this box, it's in a very nice wooden box. Let me turn it this way. It is a ginormous. Oh, no, we just Oop, lost, we lost Doug. <laughs> anyway, those are great caches. He'll be back. We'll work on getting him back Yeah, on there. So, But we can go over some of these questions. We will ask him about the uh, the games that he does for events. Yeah, it looks like as we we're playing Jumanji, and I guess Jumanji came in and attacked his computer. So yeah. we just kind of shut him off for a second. Yeah, and just to but, show a couple things here real quick, too, that we talked about earlier. We talked about those rocks. Um, he also makes stumps just like this here out of the, the same process, right? So he's using the silicone um, re and resin, and then he's casting them with the cement um, and putting those out in the wild. And, and they kind of look like this when they're done, so they blend right in. Okay, sorry. So we got Doug back here. Yep, we got Doug back. 
<laughs> I really said, you know what? I was thinking that, Jim Lyons, you might not be a bad idea. You might be a good fish to put out there. <laughs> we just said that I, while I we were there. Correct myself. <laughs> Okay, if they don't want to do Jumanji, I've got this one. This this is a ginormous, ginormous uh, a cryptex. Okay, it's got twenty number. It's got twenty dials on it. So uh, I have four medallions with words and letters and numbers on it. So they have to go find the four medallions, put that code in in the right order, and open that. So I got a backup plan. Wow, <laughs> that is. That's got to be the biggest cryptex I've ever seen. It's huge. It's about two feet long. How long did it take you to make that? You would think a lot. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> there's a, there's a, um, I do something called resin casting. And right, right. Okay, so it's really, still part of that. It really speeds things up. Each one of those dials is resin cast. So I made an original just out of the, uh, uh, what do you call it, the ABS pipe. Uh, I put numbers on it. I got it at the uh, hobby store, and uh, they were just kind of raised letters. Made a made a mold of it, and just resin cast a whole bunch. In fact, I got two of these, uh, two of these cryptexes. I think I made both of them in a day, and so wow. they cure really quick. And so I just painted them. Uh, I'm looking at the other cryptex right now, but anyways, uh, so it, it went pretty quick. And then it's just got like a four inch tube on the outside and a three inch tube on the inside. And then it's got, uh, so, you know, like a cryptex would have. Right, right. doesn't take too long. Yeah. I mean, that is just amazing because those are really cool to make anyways. But like I said, that, and with it being, because the mechanism for a cryptex is kind of difficult anyways to make. Uh -huh. It yeah. can be. But if you already have as a resin cast, that's just yeah, it goes phenomenal. Pretty quick. So it takes about a minute and a half per um Per dial. Yeah. And it has 20 dials each. So <laughs> it doesn't take long at all. It you took know, me three days. Up. It took me three yeah. days <laughs> to make five. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Yeah, I've been so, doing resin casting a long time. I think so I might have found my new way, medium. Uh, would love to know what material you use inside your Cryptex. Oh, it's just ABS, uh, just the black plastic. <laughs> oh, no, there's a cat. Oh, so you're, you're from it's Jumanji. Jumanji. Game. Jumanji. <laughs> some of the, some of the, the monkeys, you get the cats. <laughs> I don't own a cat. No, I'm is just that, is that Roomba? Is that Roomba? Scram. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. Scram. Um, and then um, R RG said that there's a moldable cement at Home Depot. Have you ever used that? It, a, a what? A moldable cement at Home Depot? Moldable cement. I have not heard of this. I haven't either. Uh, I, you know, I, there's something, oh, what is the name of it? There is something I add to my rocks. Uh, malac malac Malaconin, I think. It, it, it actually will turn <laughs> the cement into like a clay consistency. It makes it much easier to work with. It doesn't slump or sag. So when you make your pancakes and you put it up on, build it up on the sides of the, of the mold, uh, it, it doesn't, doesn't want to like slump down. And so that really helps to keep it in place. And uh, I think it's malaconin, I think. Meliconin, that's it. And, and so that really helps. So it is literally, literally like, like, a clay, like clay, like modeling clay. It's really neat stuff. You only add about 10% of it. Maybe that's what he's talking about, because uh, that really works well. Yeah, I have to go look at it. Like, I need to find a reason to go to Home Depot, anyways. Yeah, I, I think <laughs> I might have just found a new medium that I'm gonna start doing yeah. some builds on, some gadgets. Oh yeah, yeah. So, uh, speaking of which, another thing that I uh, uh, I make besides the fake rocks or fake stumps, here's the mold that I made right here, and this is just the latex mold or latex material. And oh, the cat's back again. <laughs> so, uh, Audie Olson said you remember it being a lion. The Jumanji was supposed to be a, a lion, not a cat. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> don't log me off. All right. All right. All right. All right. So, I use, I use this liquid latex, 
And you can buy this, you can find this at a lot of places, especially online. I go through a company called Silpak, and they're out of Pomona, California. But uh, it, it basically, it's like frosting about that consistency. I just, uh, I just take my stump, I'll, put, uh, I'll just take a rubber glove and put it all over there and put a couple of layers on it so it gets kind of thick. And so you can make, make a really great mold. Uh, <laughs> it's really stuck up. Oh, this is a brand new, oh, this is the first time I've pulled this off. Okay, so anyways, so you can see my original. So like I made this out of paper mache down here and okay. there's a peep tube right here. And so I just added the paper mache. I added some tree bark. I just glued it on with uh, hot glue. Uh, and I kind of put some polyurethane on it, just kind of make the mold making process. So this is a brand new mold I made and it's kind of hard to get up. I should have sprayed it with, with some, uh, pledge. This stuff works great. Just put pledge on it and it'll come right off. And so anyways, you can, you can imagine because it, it has so many, uh, nooks and crannies and stuff in it. But anyways, you can kind of see, uh, what it looks like. So I literally take this, uh, put it upside down. Sorry. <laughs> there we go. So do, do you paint that before you stick it in? Uh, I, I add something called a concrete color. It's just kind of, this is kind of a, I don't know, buff color, I think is what they call right. it. It's just a colorant. And then I spray paint it with some kind of some flat uh, brown paint. So I'll just put, I'll drop in the six inch PVC tube, fill concrete in around it, kind of shake it a little bit. And what comes out, we got it right here. What comes out is a concrete stump. So that is literal mold of the concrete stump. In this one, I just put a PVC uh, screw top on it, but on another one I have, you can literally take the top of it and it has, it's attached, has the uh, cash attached to it. That's really great. So, this thing has been out in the wild for six years and had never been discovered. So the, the trick is that I think people have a tendency to they recognize very easily something that doesn't look quite right and they'll go investigate it. So if you can take a mold from a real rock or a real stump, all the better. I mean, it's just, I don't know what it is, but people will just zero in on something. It just doesn't look quite right. That's, that's phenomenal. Yeah. And we showed the pictures earlier on what they look like, but real quick, just to show them again, this is yeah, one here you that go. you actually have the top all painted. It looks like. Yep. Yep. I literally um, actually, I took a slice of the uh, wood and then bonded it onto the top of that. Yep. Oh, nice. And then, and then I then took, <laughs> I took some epoxy, add a little coloring to it to make some tree sap. That's what sold it. And, and I put a little bit of white paint dabs on it to simulate bird poo. Oh, nice. <laughs> See, it's the details. <laughs> no one will hear that. So in the bottom it's of this one here detail. shows the top of that stump there and that looks real i mean that's yes. that's a cred incredible yeah. and and the white paint there's is, the the bird poop yeah <laughs> yeah that's fake bird poop i added don't want to touch that <laughs> <laughs> that is so so cool so i love doing stuff like that so well, when we're everything was falling and everything like that i did ask the question and we'll go back to it the maintenance uh what's the maintenance situation like on your caches <laughs> Well, the great thing about what I'm doing is that the rocks protect my caches very well. And so uh, I typically only have to do maintenance uh, every once in a while. And, and majority of the time, um, if, uh, if it rains a lot, it doesn't rain that much here in Southern California, which is really nice. But when it does, we'll probably get rain. I'll, sometimes I'll actually pull my caches out or... I'll make sure that they're in a, a custom-made bag, you know, plastic bag, uh, and that, that protects them pretty well. One year, I didn't do that, and I ended up having to rebuild a whole bunch of caches. Now, you can see all the caches I have. 
these are duplicates of the original caches that are out there now. And so uh, this actually helps a lot. One, with the anxiety of losing a cache if they get muggled. We've been lucky so far. But another one is just that <coughs> I can replace it very quickly. I don't have to worry too much about uh, uh, the downtime. And so that really helps. So the maintenance is pretty low. So then I just take, like, if there's a problem with it, <coughs> excuse me, I can just pick it up and just put it on my shelf and get to it when I get to it. <laughs> so, so your yeah. hides, yeah, Dave was saying it's a rhino next after the cat, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, so your hides, do you typically hide them in the urban environment or in the woods? I have... I have both actually. Yeah. And so I love to do urban hides. Um, I have, a, a, when I do an urban hide, I try to make it look like it belongs. Or <clears throat> if there's like a park bench or something with two legs, I'll make a third leg and people won't notice it. So if it looks like it, it's supposed to be there, uh, it'll, it'll stay there. I've got one, which is the leg of a bus stop shield. Uh, I have a little video. If you go to my uh, YouTube and my, uh, yeah, my YouTube and my Instagram uh, and my Facebook, uh, you'll see a little video of it. And uh, it's literally the, the, the uh, solar barrier they have around the seat. Uh, there's a third foot on there that looks just like the other feet. Uh, another one I have is um, it fits over a ceramic tile that sits uh, kind of like a, in a diamond. And it's just made out of aluminum, and it just sits right over the top of that. And underneath that is is uh, the the log. And uh, I've got I got several out there. Uh, if you, you want to see any any of my videos on YouTube or Instagram or Facebook, uh, you, you can take a look. And so I love making those. Those are, I think some of my favorites. Yeah, I was stalking you on Instagram earlier, and I saw some of those videos. So we'll have to share those links um, in our show notes here after the show so people can actually click oh, on them and watch those yeah. videos. We'll get those added into the description on the on the on here and um, as well. Yeah, so oh, uh, for here great one. Uh, if you get a chance, there's the LAX hide. It is a uh, let's see, it's a, a guardrail hide, but it's a little aluminum container, kind of like a little uh, it, it fits perfectly inside that little hollow part of of the geocache or I, I mean of the guardrail and uh you, you don't even notice it and and so it's a really good one i think i have like 196 favor points or something there's some construction in it right now uh so I, it's a little down right now but as soon as i uh get through with the, the construction i'll uh, i'll get it back up yeah it's a good one so how many caches do you have out in the wild right now? Do you know exactly? I think we talked uh, about 50 earlier. I think I have 50. Uh, it might be 49, but I think it's 50. Yeah. And so uh, it, it's, you would think that would be a, that would be a uh, maintenance nightmare, <laughs> but I've been very lucky. Uh, and so, um, yeah, uh, it's like I said, it's, it's a bizarre obsession. I I'm just compelled I don't know. I don't know what to do. <laughs> Save yourselves. Don't get started doing this. <laughs> oh, too late. <laughs> um, so, so we need to go back here. to a question, and it was from uh, Udak earlier. Uh, wanted us to ask Udak. about. Uh, She's awesome. Wanted us to ask about the the games that you make for events. Oh, <laughs> oh the cat is back. There was I a song so with that, about, about that, wasn't there? Okay. The, cat, the cat came back. Couldn't get rid of it. Hey, hey, Mel, would you get the uh, the the Wheel of Fortune? Can you grab that? I know it's heavy. I do. I love to make cash. I, uh, I help run a, a local cash event. And um, I love to make gadgets and, and uh, uh, events for it. Uh, they're always geocache related. Uh, one year, uh, we've done some... Uh, uh, a Jeopardy, a Geo Jeopardy, and so it was, it was just trivia, but it was a it was a PowerPoint presentation. It was a lot of fun, but uh, I think the most fun one we were doing, and I did this with Udax Group. That was so much fun, by the way. 
uh, uh, down in uh, Santa Monica. I can't remember, but uh, it was a uh, wheel of fortune. And so we did uh, geocaching phrases such as uh, uh, found the cash, but lost my car, you know? So it's just like wheel of fortune. You spin a very large wheel, just like, and it has numbers on it and you have teams and uh, it works really well. Hey, my wife's going to bring this uh, Wheel of Fortune over here. Uh, let me see if I can make a little room for it. There you go. <laughs> All right. So this is this is the event, uh, one of our events that we have. And uh, it's really a lot of fun. And so... Uh, it, it's just like Wheel of Fortune, only, like I said, it's geocaching phrase related. It's awesome. Nice. That's, that's really And cool. oh, the last one we did, the last one we did was a dart throwing. And so it would reveal, it would reveal the, uh, it would, re uh, <laughs> is that the cat hitting the floor? <laughs> it would reveal the, uh, the letters as you pop the balloons. And so, uh, and this one's, this is a lot of fun too. So it's just like Wheel of Fortune, only you throw darts. And if you can pop a balloon, you'll get to know what the letter is, if, if it's a letter or a blank or whatever. That's another one's a lot of fun. So we try to make stuff, there's other stuff we do, but uh, we try to make it as fun as possible. Event caches and, and games for events are my favorite thing. I, I enjoy that more than making them and putting them out in the wild. Just because I get to see people enjoy them in person. Yeah. And, and that's, that is awesome. So so some of the questions were also I saw, uh, what is the YouTube cha uh, channel? Um, I just found it. You can just <coughs> type in Roomba Cats and it'll go. You'll yeah, find it right there. Gadget Cache and Roomba Cats. Yeah. So you'll, you'll find, a whole it, bunch find of you on there. So, and what's your Instagram page? Is it is it Roomba Cats as well? Uh, yep, it's Roomba Cats as well. Okay, oh, excellent. Pretty simple. I, I have a whole bunch of videos I need to put on there. I think I only got I think I only got about a third of the caches that I'd like to put on there. But I got to wow. get to that. Uh, you mentioned your book earlier. I'd love to get a sneak peek into that book sometime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know that would be fun to share that with other gadget cashers, just kind of like they did with the scrapbook. You know, I was like, here's, here's all my crazy ideas. Yeah. That would be a lot of fun. I'd love to do that. Yeah. That'd yeah. be a lot of fun. Yeah. I think we all have a lot of crazy ideas. <laughs> yeah, we do. <laughs> so, but that's, what's nice about having, a, knowing a lot of gadget casters or even reaching out to them um, oh, yeah. and asking them, I think, 90% of them, 99% of, of gadget cashers I know of, if you ask them a question because you're, you know, you're kind of stuck on something, they'll help you out. So oh, yeah. that's what's kind of yeah. nice about the community. Yeah, yeah I think is. most, as I call them, gadgeteers are all um, <laughs> wanting to make this game better and just really willing to share the knowledge to help it make it better. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's. I know there's, there's a lot of, there's a, there's a strong bond there because we're all kind of insane in the same way. You know, we just, <laughs> just compelled to do it yeah so, yeah yeah so there was a comment earlier and it was from Audie olson that i was looking back and let's see if i can find it um uh, was mentioning that you would probably be really great as coming up with some uh escape room puzzles oh i think i i would love to do that yes i would love to do an escape room and just you know just just make do that you know when i retire or something i don't know uh but yeah i would really enjoy doing that that's really cool yeah, I have a uh, a property that has a cache at it that uh, has an empty space suite in it that we can't lease out. And I thought right. about for 2020 making an escape room, but <laughs> I don't know how many people would show up for that. So I think 2020 we'll is an escape room. Yeah, yeah, really. So. <laughs> we'll Where's see. that last door? <laughs> uh, so Cashers uh, said you should publish your book on Kindle. <laughs> I should. It's got some good stuff in it. I mean, like I said, I mean, I got like a hundred caches to go before I get into smart caches. Uh, you know, just just silly stuff. But uh, yeah, I, I, I just uh, I just got so many. Well, I'd love to see what you can do with smart caches. I mean, if you can do this with your regular caches, yeah, that's uh, your just... smart caches would be amazing. Yeah, I'm just <laughs> I'm geeking out. So it's just 
This has just really been so fu- yeah. so much fun. Well, I, really cool. I've got this series of, of geocaches with dials on it, like like safe cracking dials. And so uh, this has been a lot of fun. It's like, okay, what can you do with a dial? Well, you can pull on it. You can push on it. You can, you know, have a bunch of dials, you know, and just, just like trying to brainstorm different ways of making a dial do something you really wouldn't expect, you know, kind of thing. Or how do I get somebody to come up with the numbers? But yeah, I get on these little obsessive trails that I, I, I kind of run to ground, you know. And so I've got like four of these out there. Uh, I got one now called, uh, well, it's, it's based on the soft drink 7-Up. That's the clue. That's all you get, and you got to figure out how to open it. it it's a good wow. one. So I just thought of something. Uh, well, I'll push this up real quick. So uh, your book would be it would beat all of Gary's books, and just wondering if he's watching uh, from I see my shell. But uh, I how Gary cool would it be? Earlier. How cool would it be if we went at an event and you had a whole bunch of gadget builders there and they came out and just dumped, like, I don't know, a whole bunch of random material and said, you guys have one hour to come up with a gadget cache for this. <laughs> that would be a cool event at something to, to do that. That'd be a, fun. Like and if you, that'd be a blast. And if you could team up with some people. Yeah, you, you have it in teams. And you, oh. you'd have, like, Arduinos. You could have other different stuff out there that would just be i think that'd be a really cool fun event just to see what people come up with that's great i claim dave already oh yeah on my team well i'm just gonna be on your team it's us three it's <laughs> I, need, us. I need we him have, on my we have four on a team so we got doug you chad i'll be on one and we got dave so there there's four of us and whoever else we can go against that'd be great <laughs> yeah that'd be fun that's a good idea that's um might have to make that happen somehow time yeah that'd be that might be something for uh, a future Fine. event who knows and gary you are listening so hey maybe something else for mingo when we get to meet up back in uh in may next year so yeah that'd be awesome <laughs> so cash canada just said it'd be like apollo 13 you need to build this with this yeah <laughs> That'd be fun too if someone if the audience came up with an idea and you had to build it out of parts or something yeah. like it. That'd be fun. The League of Extraordinary <laughs> so Gadgets. This is why we can't get together and talk because we we could do this all night long and come up with all these crazy ideas. Yeah. So, I I don't know oh, about yeah. you, Chad, but yeah. this has it, been so terrible. much fun tonight. I've this has been great. Well, yeah. You're just feeding the obsession is terrible. <laughs> it is. I, I love talking to other gadget cash builders and other cashers more than building them sometimes, you know. So this is this has been a blast. I mean, it is a toy store. <laughs> it is in there. So oh yeah. I, I you know, I bring my my geocaches or my gadget caches with me to events. Uh just the extra ones I made that I have as backups. And it's really a lot of fun. I, it, I think it adds a lot to the event. That way they get a chance to try some new ones, get to log them as well. And uh, it, it's really fun. I love bringing them. I love to see the look on their faces and trying to figure things out, giving them little hints, you know, that I can. And uh, I, I, it's really a lot of fun. I mean, I, I love it. Yeah, That's what started my puzzle boxes is I love pe- watching people do, uh, you know, do my caches or puzzles. <laughs> Uh, and so I just added a trackable to it so you, you get something from it, right? So when you complete it, you actually get a log of trackable so you're not just doing it for fun. But sometimes my lines, so I'll have a booth with, you know, five or six or depending on how close it is to my house, it could be more. Um, there'll be a line there that's longer than the line for some of the stuff at the event. So it's fun. And I had <laughs> yes. someone who waited over two hours to do one of the boxes because he did every other one and that was the last one to do. But there was lines of people and it happened to be the trivia, which is takes the longest. It probably takes about average 45 minutes to complete. So yeah. I end up making two of those to have it at an event right. so that you don't have to well, wait in line. So if you look at these geocaches I have over my head, these are geocaches that I'm working on uh, and I'm going to be bringing to the next event. Uh, so we had one planned for September the uh, 25th, I think. I'm not sure if it's going to happen or not, but this one, ah, there you go. This one, uh, you're trying to get this ball through the through these little. You can you can raise and lower these things and try to get it to the end. This one right here is like a pinball machine. You got to catch it. 
with this thing. And this right here is you turn this cog and you got to get the ball down to the bottom through these two little gates in order to, I have a whole bunch in there. They're all skill based. And so when uh, at the next event that they have, I'm going to make sure these, these go with me. And uh, so people in California uh, try and attend and because uh, I'm going to have a whole bunch of new ones you're really going to love. So hope you're there. Yeah. That's Do you post marbles. on your, <laughs> yeah. Do you post on your Instagram when you're going to take stuff to events? Yes. Yeah. I'll have to follow. Absolutely. That. Yeah. yeah we'll follow. I don't live in California, but it's not that far of a flight. <laughs> like two hours come on yeah yeah my wife's always trying to get me to go on vacation so that's an easy way to get me to go yeah so <laughs> wow well doug this has been a lot of fun i've really enjoyed it and I, chad i'm sure Aww. you have as well oh yeah this this has been great but um you already showed you already shared how to find you on facebook and instagram um they're right there yep. Derek. Yep. It, yeah, um, you can find on Instagram Roma it's Cats. Roma Cats and YouTube it's uh, Roma Cats, yeah, and then on uh, is it just your name on Facebook, Doug Doug Ross? On Facebook it's Doug Ross. Yeah. Okay. So, but we'll have that it's in YouTube, the description here in a little bit on 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 the YouTube, and we'll post it in the on the links as well in the Facebook and everywhere. So, okay. well, Chad, One what do we have? Thing. Say again, oh, Doug. Sorry. If you like my caches and you want to make one like it, I give you full permission. I mean, go ahead and do it. Rock that, on. I just, please, <laughs> I love to see other copies of my caches. Love it. Yeah. I want to, so, Derek okay, and I okay. earlier were saying we want a Jamaji. Yeah. That will be yes. fun. That's that's an amazing cache. I, yeah. I, can't I have a play. It would be, we shall be granted. It would be at events and it, it's going to go up here on my wall is where it would go, where it's going to stay. I won't trust it. Put it out anywhere. That's just me. That's 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 just pure fun event stuff. So, well, Chad, what do we have coming up at the end of the month? Um, so next month, our build, or I guess it is the end of this month, isn't it? Um, is it? We're going to do an Arduino build. Our first little Arduino build. It'll just be using a Nano, and it's going to be a LED decipher. So it's just going to flash different colored leds um so you'd have to count how many times each color flashes to get the code to the lock which you can see on here there's a lock there now we're, we do this build we're going to actually do the basic build on it and then you can put it in whatever container you want to but uh it'll be a fun build and that parts list will be up here soon on the, the part list uh, is actually already live you can go it to up? Ge okay. it's already up you can go to geocachetalk.com backslash GT dash aug dash build, or you can just go to the Geocache Talk uh, website and go to the podcast, go down to Gadget Talk, and you find the build list down there for August. So it's already up and ready to go. Uh, go ahead and start getting your parts in for the build that we have coming up on the 25th of August. Is that's the last Tuesday of the month. What is this? Uh, just finding our way said. What was that, Chad? Uh, could do a Jumanji so do that's six feet tall uh, with one of the electrical cabinets. <laughs> that would be cool. A six foot tall electrical cabinet. That's pretty big. Yeah, that is a huge cabinet. We'll oh, see. hey, and congratulations, Chad. I saw, and I shared it with you th earlier this week, one of your caches made it onto TikTok and, and had, what was it, oh, three yeah. million views? Something, when I saw it, it was like at 2.5 million views or something like that. It was amazing. That was two days ago. So TikTok's crazy. It's probably got three now. Yeah. I'd have been no. I, you told me that. And I'm like, what? I don't do TikTok. So I downloaded it and looked at it. And I'm like, wow, that's crazy. Yeah. Wow. So that was good. Thank you, Derek. So, yeah, that was it was really cool. I just happened to see it. And it was it was like a week ago or something like that. And when we were talking the other day, so I saw that. So there's another outlet for you, Doug. Try try TikTok and start putting videos up there. I know Josh and uh, C. Michelle does. I does do that have as... a video on there. I haven't, I haven't. Yeah, I do have a video on there. It's the bus stop one, uh, and uh, I just I I just actually just signed on uh, as Roomba Cats, uh, and so I put my bus stop on there. And I didn't actually put any hashtags on or anything like that, uh, and it's been seen several <laughs> times actually. Uh, but uh, so yeah, I plan on doing that. That's awesome. So, well, Chad, any final thoughts? No, just uh, we are going to do our build uh, with the parts list is out next uh, at the end of the month. 
Um, and then we will have another interview at the first week of uh, next month, September, uh, as well. Just like what we did tonight with another creative cash builder. Um, and we'll announce that after the next show. All right, guys. Well, thank you for joining us. Hope you've had fun. Give us a like wherever, you, wherever you're watching this or listening to this. If you're listening to the audio version, it, you, it's, the audio version is not going to give it justice. You need to come and watch it on YouTube uh, to see yeah. these caches because this is just absolutely amazing. They're, so. Yeah, they're amazing. And I really appreciate oh, you coming on, yeah. Doug, with us. And, oh, and I had a great podcast, time. I'm so, so glad we did this. Yeah, I mean yeah. this. This looks like water. No, this is the drool that when we're Doug is talking. That's, that's <laughs> just from seeing all this stuff, all these caches, and just in awe. So, but thank you everybody from uh, for being with us tonight, and we will see you on the twenty fifth. There's some lot of great other stuff going on this week. Uh, don't forget to go check out Geocache Talk this Sunday. Uh, something about the Mars trackable something so you might want to go check that out uh listen to that on sunday night so all right guys we will catch you on the next episode of gadget talk <laughs>